So pancreatitis is a condition where there's just inflammation of the pancreas. It can be acute, meaning it just comes on suddenly out of the blue, terrible searing upper abdominal pain, brings you to the hospital, and most people are admitted. But then there's another variety, it's called chronic pancreatitis, where there's just chronic inflammation of the pancreas, and people have chronic abdominal pain and go on for months to years. You know, we know that heavy alcohol use is associated with chronic pancreatitis, but it turns out that's probably a minority of individuals. And what we're realizing is that many patients, whether they're age four or six or they're age 50, that they have unexplained chronic inflammation of the pancreas. The pain of chronic pancreatitis is probably one of the worst pains that people can have. Every meal that you eat makes the pain worse because when you eat, you turn on the pancreas. Probably the best analogy that I think most of my patients would say is that it's like 30 lit cigarettes dropped into your upper abdomen and left there to smolder. If the tests such as a CAT scan or an MRI are abnormal, then that helps make the diagnosis. But in about 20, 30% of patients, those tests can be normal. And then the problem is, is how do you make that diagnosis? Blood tests are normal. So a lot is kind of sitting down with a patient, going through a careful history, and trying to figure out is it other things or not. Here at Beth Israel Deaconess, we do this called secret in pancreatic function test. So if you're CAT scan and MRIs have been normal. We do this other test, it's a relatively simple upper endoscopy procedure. We can rule in or rule out the diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis. I think it's important that we treat the pain these patients have, but one of the problems is do we put them on lots of narcotics? And there's a lot of issues with that. I think we should try to to control the pain as much as we can, but when you start giving large amounts of narcotics, people get more used to them, and after a while, they don't work. We've been trying to look at other alternatives. So for example, if, let's say someone says, go ahead, doctor, just cut out my whole pancreas. Well, you have a 50% chance you'll have your exact same pain of chronic pancreatitis. So even if you remove the whole pancreas, your brain is still getting the sensation that my pancreas hurts. And probably it's like phantom limb pain. Cut off your leg, you still feel it there because that sensation has been there so long. And that's our approach now with transcranial magnetic stimulation, this research study that we're doing. And it's just one approach where we're going after mechanisms in the brain and non-invasively try to modulate them. It's not the only approach though. Mind-body, we have meditation that works for some people. Once in a while, things like celiac nerve blocks can work, and then some other medications we'll occasionally use. So eventually, the pancreas tends to, quote, burn itself out, whatever that means. But usually, people's pain, as mysteriously as it started, just goes away. I think right now, there aren't a lot of magical cures. My group has been one of the people in the country that's taken the lead on identifying what gene mutations are responsible for chronic pancreatitis. But there are, though, a lot, of, a lot of potential hope, some new avenues. We still have a long way to go, but at least we can potentially give someone the diagnosis of why they have chronic abdominal pain. Is it chronic pancreatitis? And if so, what's a thoughtful plan to really help that person and their family get back on keel and have somewhat of a normal life back.